The thing that I needed was closure. I didn't know what happened to my uncle. My uncle was murdered, and I never got closure on it. They never did a trial. There was a lot of stuff in the newspapers and whatever, not blaming anybody, but to this day, I, I never would have known anything unless there was something called the Freedom of Information Act, and that we just did some research. We went online once the Internet was around, and uh, I got some ver version of closure, but it's really not that so much as I want to know how to move on with my life. And when there's ang anguish and a failure to close something off, you, you don't feel like you can move on the right way. Am I, am I ringing a bell here? So some of the things I've learned, first of all, Peter is a great example. When, when Peter sinned, right? You remember, Jesus said, before the rooster crows, what? You're going to deny me three times tonight. Never! I'll never do it. Did he believe that? Yes? 100%. I will die with you. Well, that... That happens to all of us, right? We think we're going to act one way, but then when we come up against it, it's not so. Like when my mother got in a car accident, I mentioned this before, but I love telling the story. Her car flipped over, and she was in her mid-80s at the time, and she's upside down in the car. But the seatbelt is like really, like no, she can't breathe. All the weight is coming down on her chest. And the emergency team that got there, spoke to her, they told me afterwards, they looked in and, she, and, and they said, we've, never, we've done a lot of extractions, but we've never done one like this. And I said, why, what's up? And, and they said, because when we looked in the car, we normally hear people screaming and freaking out. And they said, are you okay, lady? And she said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm a Christian and I know where I'm going. If today's my last day, I know where I'm going. <laughs> That's passing the test. That's passing the test. They told me she said that because I knew them. I helped, we, we helped raise money for the fire department. And uh, I'm like, man, I hope I pass like that. That's a Navy SEAL. That's somebody who's not just saying it. They pass the test. They believe it. And boy, is Trisha like that too. I can tell you. What you see is what you get. Authentic. So one of the things I come to agree with a man named Thomas Sowell, who's an economist, brilliant, I highly recommend reading his stuff. He says there are no perfect solutions, only trade-offs. That might not sound very Christian, but hopefully hold that thought and I'll get there. And then another saying that I really like too is that learning offers two choices, either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. <laughs> and regret often is when you look back and you say, man, I got duped. I was dealing with a con man. I believe somebody and I shouldn't have, and you know what we call that? A tuition payment. <laughs> it's a tuition payment in the school of life. And you can draw from that. You can draw knowledge, not just of what you should do, but what you shouldn't do. And, you know, Trish is also very good common sense that way. Love believes the best, but remember what Ronald Reagan said? Trust, but verify <laughs> I trust you, but I still want to verify. So that's good. That's discernment. So what is there? A, a, there was a two there, right? Pain of discipline, because there's two types that you need to think about here. One is that in Hebrews it says that who the Father loves, he disciplines. And that's because he loves us. So we shouldn't reject discipline. We should have a teachable spirit and be ready to learn what could I have done differently. I didn't do, you know, I, I didn't commit a sin but necessarily, but I didn't also do it the Jesus way. So we want to be open to his discipline, but then we also want to have the discipline that you need, Israel Jackson, in the back playing basketball, okay? He's uh, in high school and being recruited to play college basketball. you got to bring your A game. you got to be in shape. There takes a lot of discipline. You have to say no to your friends often when they want you to go hang out. It's like, nope, i got my eyes on the prize. I'm not going to speak for you, but I think I could say safely that. He doesn't want to just make it in the NBA because he'll make money. He wants to use it as a platform to talk about Jesus. He's been a preacher since I met him. Eight years old. He used to come up and grab the mic. I'm like, dang, this kid's good. Let him preach. That's a whole different story. They're just wanting to make money. Let's use a platform. We have another player in the church here who's an NFL football player who's amazing in his walk with the Lord. He doesn't come on Sunday because that's his day he has to work. But we're doing recordings with him. He's got a website going. He's telling this is what you should do after you get saved. He's, he's an evangelist. That's his thing. He's an evangelist. Great man of God. Love him. 
Anyway, I'll keep going. Moses chose. Now, remember I said there's two choices. Pain of discipline. I receive discipline, but I also try to live a disciplined life. That could sound religious, too. Got to be careful. It's all about your motive. Why are you doing this? But then I also want to learn from the pain of regret. And of the two, you'd much rather have the pain of discipline, correction, and living a life aiming for the prize than to waste my life because time goes quickly, right? And the example with Peter is he chose discipline. He was corrected by the Lord. And remember when, when they met in, after the resurrection, Peter sees him, and they don't know it's him, and then he reveals himself, and he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? Remember this? And what was the answer? Yes, I do love you. Then take care of my sheep. Well, what would you have thought if you were Peter? You're thinking, well, I was disqualified. I can't, I can't be used by God because I denied him three times. I failed him. No, failing only happens when you don't try. See, it wasn't that he wasn't trying. He just came up short in the moment of truth when they said, are you one of his followers? The weakness of his flesh rose up. And that's what the Bible says, too. Our flesh is weak. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when we're reading our Bible, that's part of the training that we're doing is to replace the lies with the truth of the word. And you're not supposed to just read your Bible. You're supposed to study your Bible to show yourself approved. And never been more tools available to do that with than there are now. But there's also never been more distractions. So it says in Hebrews 11.25, he, Moses, chose, that's a choice. To do the hard thing. If you're going to be a Christian, there's no perfect solution. There's only trade-offs, see? If there were no sin in the world, there would be perfect solutions. Anyway, he chose the more difficult task to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin for a season. That's my little addition. Sin for a season. It's only pleasurable for a season. And boy, it goes downhill really fast. You could either get your paycheck from God or the devil. Those are the only two choices. And I would much rather work for God than the devil. He bounces the paychecks he gives you because he's a liar. And this is what it was like. That was the prize when I was growing up, is to find the beautiful girl, and you walk in the room, and somebody wants to always fight you because they want to show that they're tougher than you are, big guy. Like, Come on, bring it on. This is such a horrible way to live. It's not because you're so in love with her. You just get the status of every guy in the room wishes she was with him. Can you believe guys are this stupid? <laughs> Say yes, ladies. I believe it. Yep. Been around a few times. It's the content of the character. Who said that? Martin Luther King, Jr., I want to live in a world where people aren't judged by outward appearance, color of your skin, or any other outward thing, but by the content of their character. Wish I learned that one early. There's a whole bunch of people who wished I would have learned it too, because when you're living in sin, you leave a trail of wreckage, hurt people, and lives. 